So what I'm going to show in this video is sort of the basic creation of grid and grid lines in, um, in Revit. Uh, first I'm going to show it with recreated elements. So these are our walls that are in Revit, the Revit elements that are based on my Rhino model. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can start off with grids. So rather than building the walls first and then using the grids for your structure, you can start out with just your Revit import, or sorry, your Rhino import and create some grids from that. So the grid tool is located on the, uh, the architecture tab. It's uh, under the datum panel and it is right next to levels. And you have a few drawing options. You have arcs, but you also have pick line. You can have multi-segments as well. Um, but for right now, I would just stick with the regular line tool. And when I go ahead and draw this, you can see that it uh, wants to auto-populate with uh, the next label. Now I already had a couple um, uh, drawings in here, or sorry, grid lines in here. And if you have, if you've done this before, um, and you realize the names are wrong, you're going back. You might have to change this um, this label. So to change the label, you just go ahead and you can hover over where it says um, it says edit parameter, and you can you can change that. And, and whenever you uh, make new grids, it will base it off of this number. So to make more grids, I mean, you can go to architecture and you can and you can make a um, a grid line. And you can see that it auto populates with two. And you can manipulate these grid lines in a couple ways. One is to pull the little circular, circular handle. Um, so you might want to do these on uh, you know, multiple grids so that they all line up. And whenever they connect, you can see that now both of them are moving. Um, you can align these. So if you go to the Modify Align tab, uh, let's say I want this to actually go through the center line of that. Uh, wall, you can align the, the grid to that. Um, you can select these grid lines and you can use the copy command. So if I know I want this to be um, here, that's, uh, you know, you can use the, the snaps. You can also use the dimension. So if I want this next one to be 10 feet, then you know that when you select this, you can see that this dimension pops up. You can edit that dimension and keep in mind whenever you edit a dimension in Revit, um, the thing that's going to move is the thing that's selected. So if I change this to 15, you can see that that pops over to the right 5 feet rather than this adjusting to the left 5 feet. Um, so that's one way to create a regular grid. You can also use an array command. Array gets a little bit more um, in depth. Um, and these buildings are fairly small, so we can probably stick to copy, but I'll show you array. Um, array is going to ask you for a few things. It's going to ask you for um, the number. It's going to ask you whether you want to group these together. And it's going to ask you whether you want to move, uh, you want to choose your your um, the distance between them or the distance between your first and your last one. So I'm going to keep this as second here, and that's the distance between them. And now I'm, at, I'm selecting my first um, uh, point, and then I'm selecting the distance between them. And now it's prompting me for how many I want. So let's say I want eight. Um, you can see that they, they populate. And the beauty behind the array is that you can move one of these lines, let's say, to the last one. And what will happen is that the other arrays will adjust to them. And now you can see um, if I go to annotate and I use an align dimension here, you can see that this is these have all adjusted to uh, the same dimension. Um, to, to, when you have an array and you just want to edit one without editing the rest, you have to explode it. So you have to basically destroy the array. Um, so you have to ungroup it. And now if I move these, they're not going to, um, they're not going to change. Um, let's go ahead and go to architecture grid here and I'll add a few more. And I would uh, maintain a, a numeracy, or you know, an Arabic numeral system here, and then a um, an alphanumeric system here, um, or vice versa, just so it's a little bit easier, so we can understand the the A1. You can go, you know, one one. It doesn't really matter, but um, it's this is a pretty standard convention, I think, to have an alphanumeric character and a numeric character, so you know that the intersection of these would be A1. Um, I'll pull this to the edge and. Sometimes it gets stuck. And let's go ahead and copy this. And I can adjust these later, keeping in mind, I'm just sort of knowing that I might want a grid line at each of these points. So the downside to grids is that when I copy this and I missed something, 
uh, it updates to the last one. And so what I would do in this instance is you kind of have to, to relabel all of these. And if you missed one, uh, you know, you might want to actually just undo uh, the creation of those other um, lines. Uh, you can also just turn the header off. So if it's not a primary grid line, you could just turn that, that off and you can um, use these as your primary grid lines and your secondary grid lines, for instance. You can also break these headers. Uh, so, so they're just like levels, these annotation symbols, um, so that you can you know, um, more cleanly um, see some of the elements. So keep in mind that grids will, will propagate to other levels. Um, so if I go to level two here, you can see that I have uh, my walls below on the first floor. Um, and this is at a different scale. So you can see that the headers are different. But if I change this to like one inch, they'll go even, they'll go down even further. And if I change this to one inch equals 40, they'll go up um, in size. So just keep in mind that's, that's why they might be changing from, from view to view. Um, anyways, now I will go over uh, how you would, you could start to, it's essentially the same process, but uh, let's control Z all of this stuff and let's just look at the imported file. So I'm going to select this import and I'm going to right click and I'm, uh, well actually I'm going to go down here and isolate the element. So the only thing I have in this file is, or that I can see in this view right now, is um, is the imported file. And the process is almost exactly the same. But I can show you something like a pick line tool, right? Um, if, I, if I go to the grid creation and I use the pick line tool, now I can use some of my um, elements in my um, in my imported file to, to create sort of the boundary of, um, of my model. Um, and again, it will sort of auto-populate the name, um, so you have to be um, a little bit more careful. Uh, let's go here and here. And so the problem with the pick line command is that it, it tends to, um, you know, place your, your elements sort of randomly uh, on the line. When you use the floor um, by pick line it, or by wall, it actually sort of takes the rest of the line. But for grids, it doesn't necessarily do that. Um, so you just have to pay attention um, to what you're creating. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean some of this up here. And um, that's, that's essentially grids.